Welcome to video number three for Physics 102 on the distinctions between weight, mass, and the gravitational force. Let's begin with a review of the gravitational force that we discussed in class. We all know that if I take a ball and I release it near the surface of the Earth, then it feels an acceleration downwards towards the Earth. Thus we can conclude by Newton's second law that if there is an acceleration downwards, there must be a force downwards. This force is the force of gravity on the ball from the Earth. But gravity causes any two objects with mass to attract each other. So just as there is a force on the ball from the Earth downwards, there is a force up on the Earth from the ball. This is still a gravitational force. These two forces will be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. The difference in direction is indicated mathematically by the negative sign, which is just a consequence of Newton's third law. To get the magnitude of the gravitational force on the ball from the Earth, we use the gravitational constant, big G, it's just a number, that 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, and we multiply that by the mass of the ball, the mass of the Earth, and divide that by the distance from the center of the ball to the center of the Earth. If we wanted to solve for the acceleration of the ball, then we would use Newton's second law, F equals ma. Since gravity is the only force acting on the ball, since the force of gravity is the only force acting on the ball, we can set these two expressions equal to each other. Note the mass of the ball cancels out leaving us an expression for the acceleration of the ball that depends only upon a constant, big G, the mass of the Earth, and the distance between the ball and the center of the Earth. Let's look at this expression in a bit more detail. And let's calculate the acceleration of the ball when the ball is dropped from a point 2 meters above the ground versus a point when the ball is dropped 200 meters above the ground. When the ball is dropped from 2 meters above the ground, the distance between the center of the Earth and the center of the ball is the radius of the Earth plus the 2 meters. Now let's put in some numbers. First, we have the big G, good old 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meters squared over kilograms squared. The mass of the Earth divided by the R we've already determined squared. Plugging all of that into our calculator gives us an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. Now let's repeat the process for dropping the ball 200 meters above the ground. Now, the distance between the centers is the radius of the Earth plus 200 meters. If you repeat the process using this number for R instead, you get, once again, 9.8 meters per second squared. This means that to the precision that we've calculated these numbers, the acceleration is independent of how far above the ground the ball is. Essentially, this is a consequence of the fact that the drop heights are very small in comparison with the radius of the Earth. Thus, we are able to conclude that at least near the surface of the Earth, all objects when dropped will experience the same acceleration, 9.8 meters per second squared. You'll notice that the mass of the object being dropped doesn't matter. Our expression for acceleration was just g, which is just a constant, the mass of the Earth, and the distance between their centers. The mass of the object isn't in here. It canceled out. Thus, if I were to drop two objects of different masses, they would actually experience the same acceleration. Now this is only an approximation that's valid only near the surface of the Earth. One of your homework problems is to figure out how high I have to be from the surface of the Earth for this value to differ by 10%. Since all objects experience the same acceleration, 9.8 meters per second squared, when dropped near the surface of the Earth, we give this number a special letter. We call it little g. Since all objects experience the same constant acceleration, little g, near the surface of the Earth, we can, by Newton's second law, F equals ma, write the force on the object as F equals mg. 
we call this force mg the weight, and we often indicate it with the letter little w. So near the surface of the Earth, any object feels a force down called the weight, and that force has magnitude mg, and the direction of the force is towards the center of the planet. Note that weight is a force. It's essentially a measurement of how strong the planet is pulling on you. The units of weight are in fact newtons. Mass, on the other hand, is sort of a measurement of the amount of stuff. The units of mass are kilograms in comparison to the weight, which has units newtons. Again, mass is a measurement of amount of stuff. Weight is the force that measures how hard the planet is pulling down on you. So if I were to go to a different planet, say the moon, where the force of gravity between me and the moon is weaker, my mass would be the same, but my weight would be different. Finally, I would like to conclude with a reminder that weight written as mg is only an approximation to the full force of gravity gmm over r squared. And that approximation is only valid when the object is near the surface of a planet. This concludes this video.